joining us to discuss how he's playing the energy sector. Tortoise uh, Ecofin Senior Portfolio Manager Robert Femmel. Thank you so much for being here, Robert. Um, so are you kind of following Buffett down this path of, of potentially repositioning some of your energy holdings? Well, everybody's got to follow Buffett, right? He's been investing since 1941, so so everybody watches Buffett, and obviously a very knowledgeable investor. Uh, you know, Leslie, what we're doing at Tortoise, obviously, we focus on the energy sector. So, so where we invest across the energy sector, I think, is, the, is is really the question. And our focus has been on energy infrastructure because we just think you need energy infrastructure. Think about it: if you if you're going to have AI, and you're going to increase artificial intelligence, you're going to need EI. You're going to need energy infrastructure, because AI needs a tremendous amount of energy, it needs a tremendous amount of electricity. None of that works without energy infrastructure. So we really like energy infrastructure because of the consistent, steady free cash flow that, that the companies offer. And they turn around and pay that back to the shareholders in terms of uh, high dividend yields. Yeah, definitely big dividend plays there. What specifically within energy infrastructure do you like right now? Well, a company like Energy Transfer, it's about a 10 percent dividend yield. It, it, it reported its results last week. It's been growing its dividend every year. I mean, you know, if we're going to be in a period of uh, higher interest rates for a longer cycle, you need it, companies that are, already start with a pretty high dividend yield, but also grow that that dividend to to the sh to the shareholders uh, every year. And that's and that's an example of, of one company that's doing that. Uh, the other company that we like actually that the Buffett is participating in on the operating side is is just Chenier Energy or the the ability for the U.S. to export more liquefied natural gas. Uh, last month, Buffett bought or is in the process of buying an additional interest in Cove Point, a large U.S. LNG export facility. Chenier Energy is actually the largest uh, U.S. Uh, L LNG exporter in the world right now. And so as a result of that, we really like that company because of its potential to continue to participate as the U.S. really exports more and more liquefied natural gas across the world. Uh, there were some reports that Texas power prices surged about 800 percent yesterday um, due to some extremely hot weather over there. How have the weather patterns uh, impacted various distortions across the energy complex this season? Yeah, so, so the weather always does have an impact. Uh, clearly, uh, weather boosts demand for energy significantly, uh, whether it's in the winter or in the summer. Uh, all, weather can have an impact, though, on, on the production side as well, both of renewables, but also uh, of oil and gas. So, uh, you know, when it gets really, really hot or really, really cold, that often has an impact on the ability to produce oil or gas for a temp on a temporary basis. And so, uh, you know, obviously, uh, with the renewable side, it gets really hot. Maybe the wind doesn't blow. That can have an impact as well. And so, so some of those, we're seeing a lot more of that inconsistency. Now, what where that's an opportunity, then, is you need more storage. You need more natural gas storage. And uh, I think Buffett mentioned this uh, uh, in, in, in some of his past reports. He's actually increasing natural gas storage at some of his op uh, private facilities that he, he owns and operates. And that's happening really across several companies because you need more natural gas storage to be able to draw upon that storage when oil and gas production may not be happening because of the weather. Um. Robert Exxon and uh, Chevron obviously have not been good performers this year, largely as a result of, of course, the performance of the uh, key commodity. What are your expectations when it comes to the commodity side of all of this, namely oil, not natural gas? Yeah, David, that's a good observation. You know, it, it's been frustrating for the energy sector because Ch Chevron and Exxon in the S&P 500 really produce a lot of free cash flow, some of the, the highest free cash flow producers, but also are, are, are valued at the lowest uh, uh, EPS multiples. And so that, that's been frustrating for the sector. Um, you know, as we go forward, you're, you're right, the, the, the decline is, is, uh, in, in EPS has been predominantly associated with the lower oil price. You know, as we look at the oil price, we think that in the second half of the year, higher oil prices could be a catalyst for the energy sector. Why do oil prices go higher? Well, because we're likely to have an undersupplied oil market. So what appears to be happening is you're going to have a decrease in inventories over the second half of the year as global oil really demand exceeds global oil supply, that results in lower inventories, and typically that results in higher oil prices. And we've kind of seen that uh, as we progressed here you know, in, in the third quarter.